In the last movie, we saw how to create a link and how to specify the two most important parameters for that link, the controller and the action. But what if we want to send other parameters in the URL string? Maybe we're browsing a multi-page list and we want to view only page 5. We need to send that in the URL somehow, right? So how can we add that parameter? And then how in our controller can we access those parameters? That's what we'll see in this movie. Just to be clear, when I talk about additional parameters in the URL, what I'm talking about is having question mark page equals 3 and name equals Kevin. Those would be two additional attribute pairs or parameters that are being sent in the URL string. They are to the right of the question mark and they're separated by the ampersand. That's just basic HTML. But what we need to know how to do is how to add those to the Rails URL hash that we're using when we're creating our links. The process of doing that is super simple. All we have to do is add them as key value pairs to our hash. So when Rails goes to generate the link, it will first say, oh, I'm going to need a controller. Have I been given a controller? If not, I'll default to the current controller. Next, I'm going to need an action. Have I been given an action? If not, I'll default to the current action. And then it takes all the remaining parameters that are in that hash and turns them into parameters for the URL. So we get the page equals 3, the name equals Kevin. The one exception is with ID. ID has a special value because ID gets used so often. So many times we're talking about editing record number 12 or viewing record number 27. So we're going to be using ID a lot. So it gets a special privileged place. And that's why it has a special spot in our default route structure, controller slash action slash ID. We remember that from earlier. So all that means is that when Rails goes to write the route, when it actually tries to output the ahref, it's going to convert it so that the ID sits on the left side of the question mark in that default route structure, demo hello 1. Because it knows when it comes back in, it's going to know how to parse that. Its default route was used to write the URL. Its default route will be used when it pulls it back in again. And everything else will sit to the right of the question mark. So that takes care of how we add parameters to the links. So what about after the default routing takes place and we figured out where the controller and the action are, once we get to that controller action, we want to be able to find page 3. We want to be able to know that name is equal to Kevin, right? We need those values to be able to work with them. So the way that we're going to have access to them is that Rails gives us a special method that we can call on called params. And params is going to contain all of the get and the post variables that were sent to us. That's where they're all going to reside is inside the params, including controller and action, actually. We can still have access to those in the params as well. So as I said, params is actually a method, and it's a method that's going to return a hash to us. But it's not just a regular hash. It's a hash with indifferent access. It's a special kind of hash that exists in Rails, mostly for this kind of purpose, because it allows us to specify the key in the hash that we want using either a symbol or a string. It is indifferent to which way we access it. That's why it's called that. So that's all it is. It's a very fancy long name, and all it means is that we can specify it either as a symbol or a string, and it will find it. In normal Ruby, those are two different things, right? Asking a hash for the symbol ID would return something different than asking for the string ID. The keys would need to match exactly. And that's all we need to be able to access the params that have been passed in with the request. Let's try it all out. So the first thing let's do is add it to one of our links. I'm going to open up the index.html.erb, and let's add it right after the action hello. So here we go, id equals, let's say, 20, and page equals 5. So that'll just give us a couple of random static numbers that we can drop in there. And let's load that up in our browser. So I'm going to make sure I've got my web server running. So mine still is. You'll want to make sure yours is too. Then I'll go over to Firefox. And we'll load up, instead of demo hello, we'll load up demo index. There's the index page. And if we just roll over, go back to hello page, at the bottom of my browser, you can see where it's going to take me to. It's going to take me to demo hello 20 question mark page equals 5. That's what we would have expected. ID has a special status, so it moves over into the default route. Everything else goes to the right of the question mark. Now let's see about reading those values. Typically, you would want to read them in the controller. We don't have to. But that's typically the best thing to do. Remember, we want to sort of set the stage and do all the processing we need to do in the controller. We do still have access to them here. Hello.html. Let me just show you real quick. We can say we'd like to output params and ID. 
Typically you use the symbol notation, even though you can use a string there. Let's just do ID and right behind it, BR. So we'll save that and let's just go back and reload this page. We still have page equals five up in the URL and there it is, ID is equal to 20. So it output it for us. Now instead of doing it in the view, let's actually go and do it the sort of right way, I think, which is to open up the controller and do it there. So inside the hello action, let's say, well, ID is going to be equal to params ID and page is going to be equal to params page. So again, we've set the stage. All of the instance variables have been set up that we're going to need. They're ready to go. And then we pass things off to the template. Now let's just go down here. Let's just close that up and move this out of the way a little bit and open back up hello.html. In addition to displaying the ID, let's put out next page equals at page plus one. And for this, instead of params ID, we can now just use ID. So we're making use of those instance variables and I'm doing one additional thing, which I'm saying take the page and add one to it. So that'll be what it displays for the next page. Let's save that and let's reload it and see what happens. Oops, I got a template error. Now this is the first template error we've seen. Take a minute to look at it because this is very common sort of look for what a template error is. It tells you what the error is. Basically here, can't convert fixed num into string. It tells us where the problem occurred. It was around line six of this file. So we know how to find our error. And then it goes ahead and we have a couple of links here that we can click on that'll give us more information about what it actually did in the process. And notice this, our parameters are right here. So we can see what the parameters are. We can also show a couple of other things. Really most of the time, without clicking those links, you'll be able to find your error. Those are really if you need to really dig deeper. So now that we've seen our first template error page, how do we go about solving this problem? Well, the problem is it can't convert fixed num into a string. What it's telling me is it cannot convert this number one into a string so it can add it to page. The reason why is because page is a string. And that's what I wanted to show you. That's a very important point that I wanna make sure that we understand is when we have integers and when we have strings. The parameters are always strings. If you need them to be integers, if you want to do math with them, you need to convert them using to i. That will force them to be an integer and then they'll behave as we expected. Now once it does the math and it takes page as an integer and adds one to it, we've got a number still, right? At that point, it converts it back to a string these Ruby ERB tags always convert it back to a string so that it can display, right? It's no use in being an integer. HTML doesn't have integers. HTML only has text. That's all we can put out as HTML. So it could always converts it back for us. But you'll want to make sure that you do typecast it correctly here. The best place to typecast this, obviously, is to save this. And let's go back to demo controller. And we really want to do it here. We want to make sure that we convert ID convert page into an integer when we bring them in so that they're all set up and ready to go. Now when we try and load the page, we get exactly what we would expect. Next page is equal to six. The very last thing that I want to show you on this is that we can actually open up hello.html.erb again. And at the very bottom of our page, let's just drop down here. Let's put an HR tag and right below it, let's output the value of params.inspect. So inspect is going to give us nice output for what that is so we can take a look at it. So let's just load it so you can see what it is. That's a very helpful way for you to be able to see the contents that you're working with. So if you're not sure about the values that you're working with when you're trying to troubleshoot a problem, just drop a quick inspect in there on parameters or on anything, any hash, any array, anything you're working with, put an inspect on there and output it and you can see if it's the values that you expect.